everybody today we are going way back to the etc archives and in that i jerked dave garner out of it and dave <laughs> garner is here with us live and in person yeah. and uh you know you started here 2002 yeah 2000 april of 2002 oh, that yeah is, that is like forever ago it really is, is forever it really ago is. little little older a few pounds heavier yeah, you know yeah, all that yeah, all that yeah. but uh yeah no that it's you know it's hard to believe that it's been over 20 years, yeah. really. I yeah. mean, and, and I remember about 10 or 11 years ago whenever we produced the 10-year retrospective, you know, the 10-year anniversary show for ETC3, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now here we are another 10 plus years later right. since, that, since that show. Right. So, you know, we should do a 20-year. Where are they now? It's crazy. You know? Well, it, it's so weird because there was a music show over at the Lions Club Park, you know, where mm -hmm. they do the Apple Festival. And I sponsored that, and I did it in honor and in memory of my husband who was battling cancer. Right. That has been 20 years ago. Yeah. And so we have this 20-year history, and it just seems like it was yesterday. It, it really does. It honestly seems like it was yesterday. Yeah. I can remember the prizes we gave away at that event. I can remember the songs that they were singing. I can remember the groups that were there. It is like it was yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, we I, either have fantastic memories. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, right. I don't know what's or, or going something, on. Or, or yeah. they're just etched in our mind. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think of all the, and all the early programming too, the car shows. We did a lot of car shows. We Absol did the Bluegrass Festival. And Larry and Festival. Vic Davis. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes. Love them. Yeah. Love them. Yeah. And they were such a big part of the startup. I mean, you think of all the different people that were here in the beginning. Now, I wasn't here in the very beginning. I mean, you had Del Land. Of course, mm -hmm. you had Don Hensley, who mm -hmm. was at that time mm -hmm. was working um, with the, uh, the studio and doing sales and all those sorts of things. And so it, it, you know, like there were a lot of, there were other people you that kind of put it in place. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because when Dawn was over at the other building, right. I used to advertise with her from our businesses. And right. I'd forgotten all about the oh, fact yeah. that she yeah. was over there doing advertising before she and Danny were yeah. married. And it, so it basically it's started so in her basement. And then, yes. it, then it morphed over into the, you know, what is the current studio yes. now that we're yes. sitting in. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, I didn't get on necessarily from the very beginning, but I felt like within a year of the beginning, I was, mm -hmm. you know, kind of mm -hmm. here. So mm -hmm. I, I do feel like I've seen the, the majority of the the progression, I guess, over the years of what this place has, yeah. has looked like. So, yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. when when I look back, I'm thinking one of the first programs I saw was Dale Land doing something, um, I think about a veteran, something, you know. And Heroes of Heart. Heroes I think, of was, Heart. Was and one I of those. actually yep. recorded that back right. in the old days when we recorded on VCR. Oh, you yeah. I remember that. Yep. And, and I still have that. Right. I found it Sunday night, and it said Heroes of the Heart, and I'm there like, you go. holy cow, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so crazy. Yeah. And that was something that we were able to continue on, even after I got here, which was great, because mm -hmm. I would help produce the show. Dell was still very much, you know, the host, and, and we did s several of them. Um, you know, we did the one, obviously, on Noah Harris. Right. We, you know, That's uh, the first Gudger thing I, mean, I saw with Noah, and then the yeah. next thing I saw was an interview when he was home on leave. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, there were a wow. lot of different things. Wow. That, you know, and, and, you know, we And that truly changed my life. Life. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, because it made yeah. me aware of Lucy and what Noah was doing, sure. and so it did change my life forever. Right. I mean, it really is like a, a lot of relationships were built really mm -hmm. over the last mm -hmm. twenty years, but but especially early on in establishing what ETC three you know was mm -hmm. because. You know, to me, it was just as much about people as it was programming. It was more about people, you know? yeah, for I sure. I mean, it really was. Yeah. And I think that that, yeah. you know, ETC3 at that time was kind of seen as the PR arm, you know, face mm -hmm. of the company. Right. As I know Roger right. Futch, you know, well, uh, used to say that a lot. And yeah. so, uh, and, and I, I agree. I mean, we really did try to get out in the community and kind of become that absolutely. presence. Yep. I remember um, neighbors serving neighbors. Yep. And mm -hmm. that was a big that was a big thing sure and it was very important to them and I think that because my mother was in marketing with coca-cola and minute Maid, I understood marketing and I understood that you have to do it and it doesn't right. matter whether you feel good or not you know like when I first came to ETC people would call me and say is there any way you could come to this is there any way you can and I found myself on one Saturday I had seven events booked. <laughs> and right, when I got yeah. home that night about midnight I said don't do this again yeah. you're stupid but I was new to McKaysville, Mineral Bluff, that kind of thing, and I, I had to do it. And so I did it, and from that is how I became involved with a precious lady that we're going to share a little bit of right now. This is, if I had not gone to McKaysville, if I had not gone to Mineral Bluff, if I had not gone to Fannin County, I would never have, the last thing I remember about Fannin County, and you're going to die laughing, 
This was in 71, and I was dating a guy from Fannin County. And um, they, it was right about the time they came out with Take Me Home Country Roads. Mm -hmm. And I would get in my 66 Chevelle and I would fly to Fannin County <laughs> listening to Take Me Home Country Roads. This is pre-four lane. Yes, that this is, is old that five. Is old five you know? Literally, no, old yeah. five. And the only thing I can remember is I think one of the first date nights we had, he showed me the blue line at Copper Hill in McKaysville. Right. But it was late at night, and I didn't even see the little town because it's dark and it's night. Right. Sure. If yeah. you'd have told me the next morning, you got to get back to McKaysville and Copper Hill, I would have been like, where, what, you know, whatever. Right. But we did take Old Highway 5. Mm -hmm. and that was the only way up there. Oh, yeah. And it was so weird because that was my only familiarity with Fannin County. Yeah. And then forward, 45 years, you know, and to, to be in the county, in the area, meeting yeah. the people, loving the people, loving the lifestyle oh, and the yeah. wonderful people in the churches. And I think that's one of the most successful things about ETC. Every single church became involved with this TV station. No, oh, it really did. And I had a similar experience too. Like when, when I was in high school, we actually I grew up down the road in Cherokee County, coming up here and playing some teams that we did early on. Well, when I was in high school, it felt like, you know, we were ineligible. We played at Gilmer. You know, we played Pickens. <laughs> you thought you were in another world. We thought we were way, you know, Tennessee. I mean, you know, maybe even closer to Kentucky at that <laughs> yeah, point. You yeah, know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it just seemed so far away. Yeah, yeah, 30 and, minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then to flash forward to now and, and be living here and working yes, here and playing yes, here. Yes, You know, and it, it is so different. So I had a, kind of that similar experience. It's crazy. You know, but it's yeah, crazy. It is. Yeah. Well, well, today we are going to flash back and we're going to give you, this is going to be, we're going to take you to a very precious lady. She would pick up the phone and call me and she'd say, hey, I need you to have so-and-so on the show. Hey, I think he'd be a great guest. Hey, I think he would be wonderful to share his story. So many of your books, many of your stories, many of your lives were played out right here in ETC in front of us because Joyce Bryson picked up the phone and called me. And when Joyce would call, she would always say, I think you're going to like Willie. I think you're going to like his story. I think you're going to like, you know, and it just over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And I realized these hills are full of amazing stories of people. They really are. Yeah. Amazing stories of people. One of my favorite people was Mr. Uh, Campbell. And I, he was driving a 56 T-Bird when we went to have lunch. And I told him, I said, Lord, you're the cheapest date I've ever had. <laughs> he had a grilled cheese sandwich. But he was like 87 years old. Yeah. And we just had the nicest day, and it was because Joyce connected me with him, you know. True. And I said, that's how this all became what ETC really is, right. because it is the communities that we serve. Yeah, absolutely. It's and your story, your life. Yeah, it really is. Like, And, you know, it's. We, I saw that more through the eyes of the sports lens, uh -huh. certainly, uh -huh. because of what I did. In the latter years, I got more into the marketing side, so doing a lot of different things, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. as well. Um, being out at all the different social functions and the Relay for Life and all those different things as well with the, mm -hmm. with the events. And so being plugged into the community and you learn a lot about people along the way sure. in doing those events, sure. like you mentioned. Yep. A lot of stories yep. come from that. I've met a lot of interesting people along the way too. So it's it's been a blessing. Well, when I had the Masons own, who owned Mason Tractor, and I sat down with that wonderful couple who had been married for so many years and I listened to their story Right. I just fell in love with him, you yeah. know, and I said, now he's gone on to be with the Lord, and it just, it was, it was like, they were part of ETC, they were mm -hmm. part of our community, I would follow them, like on uh, 4th of July, and they had the pancake breakfast stuff at Epworth, they would always right. be there, oh, yeah. I would yeah. always get photos of them there, and, and to just show their love story, mm -hmm. and, and to, to do the same thing when, um, we had so many elderly couples who had been married over 60 years. I just put this call out one day and I said, look, if you've been married over 60 years, I want to hear from you. Sure. I was amazed at how many couples I was able to bring here to this studio yeah. and interview who had been married over 60 years. Right. And I said, I have um, Grady Anderson and Mary, they were like the true love story. And I think he said after two weeks he knew he was in love with her. Well, Ed and um, or Evelyn and Bob Blackstone, 
they met and were married after two weeks and were married for 65 years. Wow. Yeah. So I saw some great love stories through EGC. Sure. And it was just, I just said one day on the air, hey, if you've been married over 60 years, I yeah. want to hear from you. Right, yeah. And it was like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? So, uh, so your exactly. love stories have played out in front of us. And today I want to share just a little bit of Joyce Bryson here on set with me. Her love story has not ended. Her precious Jack is still with us. He is still here, very vibrant, very alive, very with it. But um, Joyce went to be with the Lord. And um, I, I will tell you, she was buried in an outfit I gave her and it looked perfect on her. It was pink and black, of course, because she and I love pink and black. Right. <laughs> and what an inspiration to me she was. If it had not been for ETC, I would never have met Joyce. And um, she is one of those people that I can say changed my life, molded my life, made me a better person. And it's because I was lucky enough to be sitting right here behind this desk one day. And she said, hey, I've got a story idea for you. And that's the rest of the story. So here we go to a visit years ago with Sweet Joyce Bryce. And when this was not the Sherry Show, this was North Georgia Now Today. Terrible reputation. People think I live in Tennessee now. I cross that line quite often, Miss Joyce. And I put the word out. If anybody knew anything about Campbell Cove to get in touch, you happen to be the person who was involved in the sale of the property, weren't you? Yes. Uh, the original sale of it was when, and don't anybody take this as a history lesson. The dates may be off as much as five years, <laughs> but I, I think within a year or two. But in the late 1980s, the uh, copper mines closed. Mm -hmm. And there was 2,500 people work there that were just all of a sudden out of work. And uh, they sold off all the land, uh, auctioned a lot. And this particular track was 1,000 acres. Mm -hmm. They sold at an auction. And it has this 80-acre lake on it. And, and, I, and Adam does have a picture of this. Yeah. So I hope they can pull that up because okay. it is absolutely beautiful. It's an 80-acre lake that's 60 feet deep at the dam. The Game and Fish Commission had built this years ago, uh -huh. and they stocked it with five kinds of fish. I don't know if there's fish in it now or not. The people, it's a public lake, really. Uh -huh. There is public there it is. access. Now, Matt, this is the view from the cabin. Mm. Is, that not, is, is that not something you could enjoy sitting and chilling? Oh, yeah. And it's got a huge deck. We were standing on the deck. So you could have youth groups out there and have prayer meeting and have, you know, just have a youth rally there. It's perfect. perfect. It is ideal. It's the prettiest, so best beautiful. kept secret for years well, in the mountains. And it really was a, a secret because um, I didn't know about it. And we were just kind of traveling along that road. And uh, there you go. I don't have any thousands of dollars I spent advertising it over the years because when they listed it with me, five men from uh, formed a corporation from Cleveland, Tennessee, that each of them had some sort of connection mm -hmm. uh, with Fanning County at the time. One has a lighting place there and another one owned a Robinson Supply and then just different reasons. They were, and uh, one owned the Burger, not Burger Kings, they weren't then. But anyhow, the Hardys now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they merged and bought this, and they were in no great rush to sell it or what to do with it. So mm -hmm. they did phase one on it. Well, they hired a marketing company, and uh, the lady came he there. They built two spec houses, and sh this was in 91. And uh, she came there and lived uh, there for a year. And I think she sold two tracks wow. <laughs> because at that time, due to the fact that the um, plant had closed, I mean, I s those first lots sold for $22,000, lakefront lots. Wow. There's one in our multi-list now for $199. Well, let me tell you, the little cabin that I like that has 1.57 acres, I believe, is 329 mm. and I'm telling you it's a little cabin yeah well just but the it's like are, front property so. that's right but I could not convince anybody everybody thought Polk County Tennessee was a ghost town and it's so beautiful. would be more so because for the 150 mines. years we had lived from the income mm -hmm. from the mines the whole area mm -hmm. and so when I got involved I had some pretty disappointing times along the way when they would be having a board meeting and all five of them on a speakerphone and said, what can we do? I didn't know what to do because mm -hmm. Georgia, they would come and 
when I first started selling real estate in the 70s, people wanted North Carolina. They didn't want wow. Georgia because I think it was status symbol in the oh, yeah. I have South a home Florida. In the Carolinas. They had a little place oh, up in the Carolinas. Well, I have a home in Turtletown, Tennessee, and just <laughs> love it. So. <laughs> well, I think they thought if they had a place in uh, Georgia at the time, was what I was trying to sell uh -huh. when they would, wouldn't go any place but North Carolina. Wow. And it's just an invisible line across the mountain, these state lines mm -hmm. are. But uh, for some reason, it worked like that. So it, it was really hard go to begin with. And uh, over the next 10 years, I looked up dates last night, mm -hmm. uh, I listed 1,000 acres. The smallest track was about a little less than an acre lakefront lot, and mm -hmm. the largest was 360 acres. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, over a period of 10 years, we sold them all. <laughs> so uh, I've been out of it. 2001 was the last lot I sold. But they built beautiful homes there, and that lake is so pretty. It's beautiful. And it, uh, that is the county water system also. That was what I was going to say. That was my first question. When I looked at this cabin, the first question was, what kind of water do you have? Because being a city girl, I've got to have water that I know is going to get to my door. Well, you don't mess up the water over there because you're going to drink it <laughs> in uh -huh. your house. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, people that bought the property bought to the waterfront, uh -huh. but the uh, lake actually belongs to the county municipality. Uh -huh. And that is where Ducktown, Turtletown, that general area gets get their water, the water from Camel Cove Lake. And I have never seen it fluctuate over there. This was my selling point because the TVA dams, Blue Ridge, Farner, and all these in that general area go up and down, up and down with the weather and with flood control yes, yes. For, and for electricity. But Camel Coast stays the same. One time during the drought a couple or three years ago, it was down a little. And they said that was the first time in history that Camel mm -hmm. Cove had ever been down any. Now, is there a 50 or 75 foot buffer around it? Because the people I took to look at it, we were taking pictures, and they said, well, if they just clean those trees out, there'd be a straight shot view. I said, I don't think you can clean out that close to the water. You cannot cut the trees right. within a certain feet, but I think it's more like 20 feet okay. than it's, it's a lot closer than 75 feet. Okay. But anyway, it's a beautiful area, it's and gorgeous. the people that bought out there originally for investment has done, done well. really well with yes. their... And all us Georgia folks thought, you know, people just won't buy in Tennessee, mm -hmm. so they didn't do it, <laughs> the well, developers in Georgia, but it was a hassle. That was the first, really? that was the first development. We can't call them subdivisions of the mountains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're developments, but anyhow, that was the first one that I knew about that was approved in Polk County for, for a development for mm -hmm. that size of lots and stuff, and they really, the uh, corporation that bought it really w did a lot of things in order to get it, but then they did phase two. Now, you talk about a special memory. Joyce Bryson, right. uh, the mother of so many, mother of some fantastic children, from teachers to preachers to just good folks and grandmother to many, many, many. When I watched she and Papa Jack's love story, I understood what true love was about. Mm -hmm. um, they met over in the Atco Village in Cartersville where everybody worked at the mill and um, it's, it's so weird, what a small world, because my co-host, Bill Senior, grew up in the Atco Village in Cartersville. Right, yeah. So, you know, it was like he met Joyce, and it's like, oh, we live down the street from each other, you know? <laughs> right. So what a small world. Yeah, And I said, really that's is. something that ETC really did, is we created yeah. a world that was small, and we expanded it to so many places and so many people. You're right. And speaking of Bill, what's up with all the snakes? Oh, and yes. all the stuff. Can you, can you believe that? Uh, every time I turn around, he's, he's posting another snake video yes, online yes, of the snake yes. he's found during, you know, yes. in the landscape. Well, I had and, him know. cut grass on our new development the other day, and I said, did right. you see any snakes? And he said, not there, but, you know, on the next right. job I did. <laughs> but, but it's so weird because um, the connection with Atco Village goes back to the 1940s, the 50s, right. and then we found other people who've moved here yeah. Who used to live in that coach? Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. once Joyce mentioned it on the air, and then once Bill talked about it, then people would contact us and say, hey, I grew up there. I went to high school there. I went to, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. 
And it is such a small world. And it is interesting how people migrate because even mm -hmm. people that I went to school with, there's a lot of them that, that keep moving, you know, up this way mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, and move further out from the city or what have you. And I've run across a lot of people. I've, I've run across people that I went to high school with that live here that I didn't even know I went to school with. Isn't that we crazy? Were the, you know, and yeah. so, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it, just to see the migration of people and moving around and uh, oh yeah and you know now of course you you know it being in, you know the field you're in I mean you're seeing people just migrate here from all over the place now so uh, it's North Georgia particularly this area is is not a secret anymore. Busting at the seams. Yeah yeah, yeah. Not, not well, a let secret. me tell you what is driving this and I was telling another realtor about it this morning yesterday in Atlanta <clears throat> we had two drive-by shootings on the interstate road rage mm -hmm. <clears throat> we had somebody killed because the cashier was killed because the guy wouldn't wear his mask. And then we had um, another one that was killed in a violent dispute. Okay, that's four in Atlanta. And I told Evelyn this morning, I said, let me tell you something. I said, what is driving our market is fear. Yeah. Because people are seeing things happen in their communities, in their neighborhoods. I grew up in Morningside. Morningside was like the most affluent, the most beautiful, the most homey, the most comfortable, mm -hmm. the greatest neighborhood in Atlanta. I left there 53 years ago because my neighbor was bludgeoned to death with an ax by an intruder. Mm -hmm. Three doors up from me in right. Morningside. Now, 53 years ago, yeah. I had enough sense to leave. Right. because of violence and things happening. Roll forward 53 years, yeah. and you look at the violence and the no regard for life and the sure. no regard for personal respect. You right. know, the yeah. respect is gone. Sure. And it yeah. scares me because Atlanta was a beautiful, vibrant city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest knockdown, drag out, God, arguments my husband and I ever had he was the Atlanta Advertiser King. He'd get that Atlanta Advertiser and he'd look for bargains. He'd look for stuff. Right. And he was looking for a certain dog for his daddy. Mm -hmm. And he found one. And it happened to be in a really rough side of Atlanta. Right. And we went down there. And when we pulled in this place in my brand new white suburban, and these people started rushing our car and throwing rocks at us, and not because we were in this neighborhood. Right. I looked at my husband. I said, "Back up, get us out of here! <laughs> if you ever do this to me again." The dog's not that important. No, no. Get your dog in North Carolina. But the violence in Atlanta yeah. is taking over the happiness and the wonderful. Right. So many great memories in Atlanta. I would sure. love to go back to Mary sure. Max Tea Room every day. Would I drive 75 in Atlanta to get there? Heck no. Right. Mary Max can send me a box, mail it up here. Right, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I'm not going to put myself in that danger. My daddy was a street walking cop in Atlanta. People respected him, people looked up to him. That's gone. That's yeah. gone. And yeah. it, it starts, it doesn't start in the schools, it starts in the homes. Yeah. You teach your children respect. Right. You right. respect. You value life. Right. And I'm telling you, Dave, there are people down there getting killed for ten dollars. Oh yeah. People get, yeah. getting killed because somebody said something stupid. Sure. Like the lady yesterday just said, "Sir, put your mask on." Well, they tell us to put mask on when we go to a certain store in Dawson County, and it makes me angry. But I don't shoot anybody. I hate right. to wear those masks. And so I shop very non-frequently there because I sure. don't want to wear a mask. Sure. But this guy literally went out to his car and got a gun and shot the cashier. She was probably making eight bucks an hour. Right. And it's just gut-wrenching. Right. But that's why real estate in this area, because we we are a safe zone. We're, we're a loving zone. We mm -hmm. are everything. Your kids can get out in the yard and play. They can run. They can chase the dog. They can right. kick the can. You know, they can play ball. Sure. You know, yeah. and, and you have enough yard that your neighbors aren't going to say, your ball went in my yard, right. you know, exactly. and incite violence over right. nothing. You know, right. it's yeah. crazy. It, it, it's escalated a lot. In my, you know, my dad worked on Peachtree Street for a number of years in the mm -hmm. old 1776 building um, where the Coach and Six restaurant mm -hmm. is no longer right. there, but right. th that whole stretch there. And uh, so we, I used to go down to his office a lot, and, and we'd go eat and stuff, and then we might go to a Braves game after that or mm -hmm. whatever if it was during the summer and I was out of school. But um, so yeah, my, I have a lot of like childhood memories of Atlanta as well and the way it was. 
uh, compared to what it is now. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I mean, everything has has escalated to the point that you don't, you know, you don't necessarily feel safe. You no, know, when you go down no, there and no. um, and and you know, uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, there, there's a lot of areas that kind of, you know, that they get cleaned up and and you know. Uh, people kind of move around the city and we've seen you know obviously with the Braves moving to Cobb County and you know and, and them getting out of Atlanta you know because they they you know needed more area to be able to do other things around mm -hmm. it that the city of Atlanta was not willing to do so they took off but I mean I, yeah it is I mean really it, it has changed a lot um, over the years unfortunately but I think you're right I mean I think that, that a lot of those things and also the fact that a lot of businesses are, are able to work from home because of COVID. People mm -hmm. were sent home. Mm -hmm. People realize, you know what? Uh, it I is people can commute. still be efficient. I yeah. don't have to commute. Yeah. Yeah. So you're having a lot of people that can do their job from their laptop mm -hmm. as long as they've got a good, you know, internet signal right. you know, or what right. have you. Right. Uh, they can live in Blue Ridge mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and do the job they were doing in downtown mm -hmm. Atlanta. So, I mean, I think there are definitely things that are driving that. But like you said, I agree with you. I mean, I think the climate that we're in, particularly in the city, people are, are mm -hmm. being, you know, pushing out further yeah. and that's that's obviously bleeding over into our area. I was in Atlanta when I was working with Kroger. I was headed out um, I was headed out 75 or 85 splits in Cleveland Avenue. Mm -hmm. You know where yep. Cleveland Avenue is in Atlanta? Uh -huh. And I'm in a 1996 gray Chevy van and Phyllis Gerard was with me and I looked at the gas hand and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, we're almost out of gas." Cleveland Avenue is not an area that, that women would get off in normally, ever. Right. And I jerked over there, I got off, and I bought one dollar's worth of gas. I said, Phyllis, run in there and pay for it right quick, and we'll get back in the van and we'll go. Yeah. I was terrified. That was over 28 years ago. Right. I was terrified then because there was a, a part of violence that was going on in certain areas. Yeah. And it is because we have families without fathers who are teaching. Oh, yeah. We have families whose mother may have been a drug addict and then the child doesn't know, you mm -hmm. know. And then we have miracle stories from families who the parents were drug addicts and they were homeless, but the child ended up being valedictorian. Right. So there's both sides of this, you know. Sure. You have the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the ugly is the respect is no longer taught in the home. Right. Yeah, and parenting has changed so much. My wife's a school teacher, so I mean, she's God bless we her. see it. God yeah. Bless her. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. um so I mean, it, it's just one of those things that um you know, you don't have to look very hard. I mean, uh, to mm -hmm. kind of see the the way the world is evolving and yeah. um and, and it's unfortunate because you do have a and even here, I mean, even in our area um, you do have those those domestic things that are going on and, and all those sorts of things that happen behind the scenes. And, and don't be shocked. I mean, we have drugs, we have meth, we have crack, we have heroin, we have right. everything in our area, but it hasn't completely taken over the community. Right. And I think that's right. the difference. That's the biggest difference, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's no like I said. I mean, this area is no longer North Georgia's best kept secret. You know, no. I think people no. are. You know, I, we have a retired couple that, that live in our neighborhood that moved here from from uh, basically Napa Valley, from Lake Tahoe, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. California. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's interesting because when you look at the, I guess, the topography and the geography or whatever of this area, and you're seeing all these wineries and all this stuff, it's like North it's Georgia's to becoming look like like, like Northern California. I mean, yeah, it is kind of yeah. like, you know, wine country east. And yeah, so you do yeah. have people that are moving here even from the west coast that are mm -hmm. migrating mm -hmm. all the way across the country to live in the area and they don't feel like they're giving up a whole lot to yeah. move over here because they're getting a whole lot more house you know for what they're paying Twice out there as much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know if not yeah. more and yeah. so yeah. it makes sense for a lot of people but for us you know yeah. we've got to be able to have that infrastructure and all that and and you know you you have people's politics that come with them and yes. things too yes. and all yes. all those sorts of factors yeah. that play yeah. into yeah. it you yeah. know yeah. so well i'll just leave that there <laughs> living, living in cherokee county we have seen massive massive growth yes pickens county is is that little sweet spot yeah. right there yeah. you know it's yeah. just first mountain city Pickens County is that sweet spot because right. you still, I always, and yesterday I took a couple from Kennesaw on a trip and I took, okay. I chose specific roads so yeah. they would get these amazing mountain views. Right. And they said, oh, you took us a different route. And I said, of course I did. I wanted you to see, and I, I used to tell people, this was my thing. Everybody would call and say, hey, we're looking for five acres and a mountain view and we need a creek and da, 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 da. I said, okay. So I'd show them everything with the creek, everything with the creek. And they'd say, there's no mountain view. I'd say, well, get in my car. We're going to town. I stop at the red light by Jackie Dunn's drugstore, and I say, right. right there's your mountain view. 
And I said, anytime you want the Mountain View, get in your car and come to town. I said, I can sell you a creek and I can sell you the land, but I ain't got the Mountain View to go with right, it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your Mountain View. Jasper, downtown Jasper is about to blossom, finally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing it looking good, feeling good. It has that warmth again. People are walking the streets, right. you know, and we're seeing people choose to move to Pickens County. Sure, sure. For a while, they were kind of just settled in and sitting there, and it right. was very quiet. Yeah, it was sort of that in-between, you know, mm -hmm. like, because you, you're, you're, you're... They're going to the mountains, so they go to the Blue Ridge. Right, but they're yeah. still connected, you know, you're not far enough from Atlanta, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it really was in the middle. And you see that, I mean, LJ, obviously, you know, they've always had the, the, the you know, the, the, the roundabout and everything, and, and the, the apples, apples and all that, but now you've got a lot going on right there in downtown mm -hmm. that's drawing people. Blue Ridge obviously is going on. they got a hotel right slap, yes. slap in the middle of town now. I understand. Now. I heard you know, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you yeah. know, and then, and but all of a sudden now Jasper, like you said, is, is one of those towns that's also kind of catching up a little bit. And, and a lot of people, I mean, here's the thing about it, I mean, and a lot of people, you know, they don't want the growth. I mean, they mm -hmm. like the quaint, mm -hmm. you know, living and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm um, one of those that like the quaint living, but also like the stuff. Right, so. exactly. So you've got to have, you've got to find that balance. Um, and, and the thing about it is, is, I, and this is just my opinion, but I think the growth is coming regardless of whether we want mm, it or not. Sure. I'm not sure we can keep it out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that, you know, you've got to be able to have businesses to provide the infrastructure to support residents mm -hmm. and cer certain mm -hmm. things as well. So, mm -hmm. so I'm all for, you know, being able to, to you know, if, if it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. to be able to, to have the controlled growth or what have well, you. Well, let me tell you a shocker for me yesterday. I'm taking this couple on this tour, and I'm taking them down my choice roads that I just love, these quaint little country roads. Sure. And I'm two miles from where I live in downtown Ball Ground, and I make a turn, and I'm going out there, and I see a sign that says 101 acres for sale. And I'm like, whoa. So there's yeah. 101 acres it is now for sale two right. miles from ball ground and that means we're going to have a fantastic development right less right. than two miles from ball ground yeah. it's great to have these developments people finally putting land on the market that is two miles to town mm -hmm. because to me there's nothing any sweeter than ball ground and walking ball ground and enjoying the parks and enjoying the botanical garden enjoying ball ground but to have people living that close and, yes. and they'll say, let's jump in our car and go to town or let's walk to town or let's right. whatever. You know, I think that is, is going to help because a lot of families have held on to land, held on to land, held on to land. Right. Now they're like, okay, maybe this is the time to sell. Right. So exactly. we're beginning to see yeah. some people let loose, you right. know, and they're selling 100 acres, they're selling 50 acres, they're selling, yeah. you know, 150 acres. Sure. So I think that is going to make the difference because we're not going to be too crowded because there's plenty of this land. Right. There's land that has never been touched because sure. it has been in the family since 1800s. Right. And we're seeing that everywhere. Oh, yeah. And, so, I mean, you talk about a town that, that has completely changed. I mean, ball ground. I mean, no, you're right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you drive yeah. through downtown ball ground it's now. It's awesome. I mean, it's, it's it's awesome. This stuff going on like crazy. <laughs> it's and, awesome. You know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, it's it's all you know. It's right there on Main Street and, and everything. And I mean, and today, some, you know, a public announcement today, tomorrow, and the next day, Main Street and Mile Ground is being paved. Beware, beware, <laughs> stay off the street because it is being paved right, the yeah. next three days. So there you go. So all that, yes. all that, you know, the, tra the foot yes. traffic in here, yes. you gotta, gotta yeah. make it walkable. Yeah. But no, yeah. I love, I, I love what's happening to, to ball ground. Um, Our ice cream shop has to be the greatest on. success story, and Dominic's pizza, his pizza oh, is yeah. fantastic. Absolutely, oh my yeah. gosh, it's fantastic. We're, we're living in a time where food trucks are the thing now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like I mean, yeah. you know, events and things like that. And he's a super, super nice guy. And I said, oh, yeah. you know, he's a New Yorker, but he's a good one. Right. Yeah. And he just has this fantastic <laughs> attitude, yeah. and I said, that's what makes you come to a new area and be accepted sure. because you have that good attitude. Oh, yeah. And his yeah. attitude, I can remember when he first opened, we live right behind it, and I uh, pulled around there to get something and I said, hey, tell me about it, I'm so excited, I can smell it from the front porch, you right. know, and he's, oh, yeah. and he's explaining it all to me and, and he's like, well, try this and try this and try this. And it was just all wonderful. Yep. It was just wonderful. And what a unique experience. Now, he's been there several years. Right. 
and right. I understand that he just purchased the building and he's gonna he is settling in to stay okay, so yeah. I love that I, I love, love that, that. He's got, yeah. you know good good product good location yep, yep. I mean and and you know like you said a good attitude yeah as yep. good as a New Yorker can be that's right I mean, Bless no, his I'm, heart. I've got friends in New York but anyway but <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah I mean it's uh, everyone really through there's done a great job like you said the excitement in Jasper and it's already happening of course Ella J and Blue Ridge, and really all up down our highway I mean it, yeah. it really to me this really is a jewel it is for a lot of it people is. we and are I, blessed oh yeah beyond. and, and, I, and yeah. even and back to our original because yeah. I know it's like yeah. alumni week you're gonna have some other people yeah. on throughout the yeah. week Hans is coming Thursday yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean so even back in 2002 when I moved up here I, I felt like you know this is where a lot of people want to come to retire. Mm -hmm. So if I can already be here and make mm -hmm. a living somehow, mm -hmm. then then I'm in the perfect position. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about you're making a living doing something else, but you're still doing what you love because you're still doing sports. Yep. So we'll talk about that when we come back in just a minute. again for fire in the sky fireworks over lake blue ridge this july 4th all thanks to our sponsors blue water energy the vantage county chamber of commerce and caldwell banker high country realty so come join the live excitement of fire in the sky fireworks over lake blue ridge on july 4th or watch it live on etc channel 3 whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Dave and I are getting hungry, so we're going to talk food right now. <laughs> I was wondering what that was this doing is, over here. This is a gift to me from Cole, and it's it's mustard barbecue sauce. Now, I'm going to try it on, uh, we make this thing called bird dogs. Okay. And it is literally, it was done at a racetrack, so you can okay. identify this racetrack up in South Carolina where my son was racing. I said, I'm going to run and get me something to drink. And he said, well, the line's out the wazoo. He said, get something out of the motorhome. And I said, what do you mean the line's out the wazoo? I said, I wanted something different. And he said, you just better get something out of the motorhome. He said, that line's so long. And I looked, I said, why is that line so long? He said, she sells bird dogs. I said, what the heck's a bird dog? <laughs> and he said, oh, Mama, go up there and get you one, get you one. <laughs> so I had Wait one, line. I had yeah. one, and then I asked the lady, I said, ma'am, I said, would you tell me the recipe and how did you do this? She said, sure. And so then I went back, and by then, Nick had had two, and Michael Wood had had two, and everybody had eaten two of them. And that's like 10 of them, you know, in one right. night. And I said, man, those things are good, aren't they? He said, yeah. So I went back up there and talked to her, and I said, would you mind if I included your recipe in my next cookbook? She said, oh, no, that's great. So I did it, and then I made it on the air, but I changed her recipe a little bit, because growing up in Atlanta, 
I don't know if you remember, there was a varsity over here and mm -hmm. there was a yellow jacket over here. Uh -huh. The yellow jacket did better hot dogs because they grilled their buns in butter. Okay. Now you cannot yeah. mess bread up by putting it in butter. Right, you just yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> that is like the the bread extraordinaire. So the yellow right. jacket had the better hot dogs because they grilled their buns in butter. So I told her, I said, I'm gonna improvise and I'm gonna change your recipe just a tiny bit. I started making my own honey mustard barbecue honey mustard sauce where she bought sauce. I right. made homemade. Right. And then I grilled the buns in butter. And I'm telling you, Dave Garner, you don't eat one. Oh. You don't eat two. You could eat three of them. <laughs> I'm sure I could. <laughs> it is chicken in a hot dog bun with cheese and honey really? mustard. So it's a chicken dog, basically. Bird dog. Right, yeah. <laughs> Bird Which dog. totally makes sense now, because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, bird dog. This is going to have to come together in a second somehow. It does. But okay, but that makes sense. Oh my gosh. So oh is it just gosh. like a chicken breast or a chicken it's strip? It's chicken or? strip. Chicken okay. strip. And and I like to do my homemade chicken strips. But if your wife's in a hurry on Friday night and she yeah. wants to have a fantastic dinner that the kids are going to love, run by somewhere, Speed Burger, Zaxby's, whatever, and get right. a box of uh, Bojangles, get a box of chicken strips. Yeah. And then grill your buns in butter and yeah. make your homemade honey mustard. Right. Drizzle it on top of it. Put a slice of cheese on it. Throw it under the broiler for just a yeah. second. Oh, my gosh. See, I, I melt cheese over everything. I mean, it you is, know, like melt the cheese over I'm anything is good you, to me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, I, you know, like we'll, we'll grill out chicken breast and, and I'll... <sighs> I'll take it and I'll throw it on a bun and melt cheese over it and yeah. eat it like like a yeah. Chick-fil-A sandwich, yeah. you know, yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You gotta yeah. try bird dog. It's okay. so flipping good. I'll, I'll so do that. yeah. So so, so Cole gave right me here. that, and that's what we're gonna use. So this coal that's here mm -hmm. in here cold. today. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. That's my gift, and well, it, it I'm, came I'm, from a distillery from Tennessee, and y'all know I don't drink, but I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna uh, that's going to so be exciting. Awesome. We're going to try that. So oh, I'm, I expect mine later <laughs> yeah, now. Come on now. Okay, now you are you left ETC, but you continue doing broadcasting, and at the same yeah. time, you had to make a living. So yeah, what you right, doing? Right. What so, you doing? So I've been uh, I've been blessed to have been in the insurance business now for over four years, I guess. Um, working with Woodman Life, mm -hmm, Woodman mm -hmm. of the World. A lot of people know it as a is a not-for-profit. Uh, we do a lot of fraternal activities in the community. We do a lot with the American flag, mm -hmm. hence the shirt. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so we do a lot for our veterans, our first responders. We have a lot of different things that are geared towards towards them. But we primarily do, you know, of course, life insurance and retirement. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I've uh, been doing really full-time for the last four or five years. But I've also had the opportunity to continue to stay in broadcasting. And I tell people I see all the time, I probably do as much broadcasting now as I did mm -hmm. when I worked at ETC full-time. Mm -hmm. No lie. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, I you know, I still Moonlight with ETC, you know, high school sports, mm -hmm, but I do mm -hmm. have another football gig. I do high school football for WLJ Radio. We do a mm -hmm. Cherokee County Game of the Week. And, I, you know, I've really, I've just enjoyed working with those guys so much the last few years that I've stayed there. Mm -hmm. um, even though I could, you know, I, I've been invited, you know, to come back up here and, and help out as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And I do try to keep my foot in the door here, obviously, because I do have such a good relationship with right. ETC. Um, I, I've worked with Barry College on their radio crew for the last five years. Um, this year I got a gig with a, a it's called Flow Sports, which is kind of like an ESPN3. It's a video mm -hmm. platform, mm -hmm. and I'll be doing all the Valdosta State uh, College uh, University football games, uh, mm -hmm. home games this fall for that. Awesome. So I'm switching. So I've been with Barry the last five years. I'm doing that. Also working with the Rome Braves. Um, the minor league affiliate for Atlanta, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and and doing some uh, PA announcing with them. So I'm doing some weekend, you know, over the intercom, you know, PA stuff. So um, so yeah, that and then um, I, I, other little things here and there, contract stuff that that pops up. Mm -hmm, so um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I stay particularly during the fall season. Mm -hmm. I, I stay super busy, you know, with high school and college. Um, the Rome gig is nice because it's a kind of a spring summer and it's spread out mm -hmm. um, it, as much as I want to do or as little. Uh, and then, you know, just, just here and there, you know, and then ETC, like I said, with some other high school stuff still. Right. So, I, you know, it, it's nonstop. Um, but the great thing about what I do full time and I have an office, uh, you know, is, is I kind of am able to set my own schedule. So I'm still able, much like you, mm -hmm, you know, I'm mm -hmm. still able to do those things I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do get paid to do them, not much, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it, it is something fun that I still get to do because I have that, that flexibility to be able to do it. Yeah. And it is a passion of mine. So yeah. um, I always say as long as someone will have me, I'll probably try to stay in broadcasting till well, death. You, you heard you know? what I told the guys because honestly, after my MRI and when there were some issues, I said, 
oh my gosh. And then I told the boys and I was kind of teasing, kind of serious, and I said, you know, I never think about retirement. I just think I'll work till I fall over dead. Right, yeah. And I told them, I said, listen, I said, the perfect closing to the show would be if I fall over dead on the show live, get great shots of it, submit it for a telly, <laughs> right, <know>? yeah. <laughs> and, and we will win a platinum. Yeah. But I'm like, it is so weird because I don't want to quit doing what I do because sure. I love both my jobs. I right. am down to just two jobs. I usually had three jobs, but I'm down to two, which is kind of like retirement for me. Sure. But I love every single morning. I get up every single morning looking forward to what I'm going to do, and right. you're the same way. And how many wonderful people have you met through insurance that you've changed their life? Oh, yeah. You literally have changed their life. Well, and, you know, this is very much a uh, referral business. Mm -hmm. So if I've helped you in any way and you want to refer me, I'd greatly appreciate it. But yeah. you're right. I mean, it's one of those things where you start with the people you know and mm -hmm. you care about. Because I know if a lot of people say, oh, boy, here comes another insurance salesman. You know, mm -hmm. I smell them a mile away. Mm -hmm. But with what we're doing, particularly with the life insurance, I mean, these are people you want to protect mm -hmm. and you want to truly build a lifelong relationship with. So. Yes, I, I, when you start in the business, you start calling the people you know, mm -hmm, and you're bugging mm -hmm, them, you know. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you know, you start to meet, you get referred to other people mm -hmm. that you don't know. Right. And so over the last several years, I've had the opportunity to come across a lot of people that I didn't know mm -hmm. before I moved here in 2002 working at ETC right. because I met a lot of people. I mean, I feel like I have a pretty good network of folks. I mean, I know people just about anywhere I go. Right. right. Um, but to have met some of the people that I didn't know, you know, but I've gotten to know because, like you said, with this job, you've gotten to know people you wouldn't have otherwise mm, met and had those relationships. Yeah. And I've been able to say the same thing through the insurance business. You know, we're not doing the home and audio and the stuff that people quote every six months and they mm -hmm. come and go. Right. You know, we're doing stuff where people are locked in for a lifetime. So I, I have to really try to make sure, and, and uh, there's a lot of great, uh, you know, insurance folks in our town, and they all feel this way that you know you, you definitely have to develop relationships with people mm -hmm. and one of the things I think that made it a I wouldn't say an easy transition because it's still a challenge every day but coming from the ETC world and the PR world where you're having to go out and develop those relationships mm -hmm. you know and, and, and being in front of people all the time helped me to kind of transition into insurance because it was one of those things where I, I picked up with doing events and social and networking and all mm -hmm. those things that I was doing with ETC. Now I'm doing it with, with Woodman in my job now. Um, so it, it really did kind of help to, to kind of set the, you know, the, sure, the, you sure. know, the steps. And, and you had no idea that that was a path you were going to take. No, but, but, no. But God knew that there was yeah. going to be a change in your life. Sure. And, and at the time of that change, you know, sometimes you're not ready for change, and it's like sometimes he has to kick you out the door to make you understand that there is something better out there for you. Right, yeah. And this has turned into something not only it's good for you, it's good for other people, but it's enjoyable. You yeah. know, it's not like yeah. you get up every morning and say, oh, my gosh, I've got to go to the office. Go you enjoy your job. This person or that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you enjoy your job, and that yeah. means a lot. It really does. There's so many people now, you know, again, doing what you love and doing what pays the bill sometimes are two separate things. Right. You right. know, and so you have a lot of people, particularly younger people that get a degree in a certain field that go mm -hmm. into it. They love it, but mm -hmm. they realize it's never going to afford them the lifestyle they want to live, you know. Right. So then they have right. to end up going and doing another job that they may not like as much, but they yep. make more money. And yep. so, you know, they, they, I tell, you know, like my kids, you know, the, the secret to life is, you know, find something that you enjoy, but that will also take care of you financially yeah, as yeah. well and if you can find that if you can yeah. morph that you know together into something then you know you're you're doing great mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many people that you know they're sitting in traffic and they're commuting to Atlanta every day oh, yeah. and an eight-hour day becomes a 12-hour day just because of that drive and oh, that was yeah. one of the reasons I never oh, wanted to yeah. go to Atlanta <laughs> you know because yeah. people would always ask me like you know do you not do you want to work in Atlanta do you want to do that and I'm like not really mm -mm. you know um, and I probably sacrificed a lot to move into the area because, you know, we're not in that prime media market, yeah. as oh, you yeah, know, yeah, being yeah. in a more yeah. rural area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the quality of life to me was, was a good exchange. I, I felt like, Absolutely yeah, priceless. yeah, I yeah. felt like, you know, from the sake of raising my kids and our schools and living in the area that we're in, like I said, I mean, people are coming here to retire. I'm already here. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm not having to make an eight hour day, a 12 hour day, then, you know, I'll be content. As long as I can pay my bills and afford mm -hmm. to live within mm -hmm. my means, you know. Yep. So, yep. Um, you know, that's just one of those things that, that I kind of feel like, you know. Right. But some people, I mean, there's people that commute from Ellijay, you know, oh, or whatever I know every day. Drive from Copper Hill. Or yeah. 
to, to Atlanta. Oh my, oh I'm like, gosh. and I just, I'm like, wow, I can't, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine that. And I hope they're happy. I mean, maybe they are happy in their situation. I'm not saying they're not, but it, for me, I just know me. I'm, oh my goodness. I set this little radius for me, and I've been outside that radius lately because of something that happened with me in Atlanta, and I was helping this lady, and I was coming up 141. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming up 141, and I get near kind of Forsyth County, and I realize, oh my gosh, these are those pine thickets that I used to drive through that was nothing but like a two-lane road. Right, Have yeah. you been on 141 lately, coming out of Doraville and then come on up to Forsyth it's, County? It's been a while, but I know Holy what you're talking about. Holy yeah. it's, like yeah. it's like a whole different world. It really there is. There are 10 million houses down there. Yeah. And I thought in, in 1997, I'm driving, uh, my Chevy van and I'm coming out of the uh, design center at Kroger down in Norcross right. and I'm coming up through there on this little road and it starts snowing and and I'm just like am I gonna make it back to Pickens County it was only oh, 30 yeah. miles yeah but it's snowing you know and I looked at that area and I just looked around a couple of weeks ago and I said I cannot believe this is the same place because <laughs> it's like eight lanes of traffic oh, yeah. now Oh, yeah. And I was like, holy it's amazing. cow. <laughs> well, I remember, so my family moved here. My mom's side moved here in the mid-60s or whatever. And so when I was, you know, very little, I wasn't around then. But uh, I remember Dunwoody basically being oh, an yeah. intersection. Oh, yeah. You know, it was yes. just one yes. little. Yeah. And my grandfather owned a gas station right on the corner, you know. And and um, and now it's just huge. And, and I think about, like, communities like Johns Creek, for oh, example. Yeah. John's Creek the one when from? I got to it. John's Creek is like this massive city in itself. I, I'd never heard of John's Creek until yeah. about, you know, 10, yeah. 15 years ago, yeah. whatever. And then all of a yeah. sudden, it's like its own it's incorporated its own yes. whatever. Yes. And I'm like, that. this used to be a little nothing area between, mm -hmm. you know, Alpharetta and Duluth or, yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever. I think John's Creek are those people who were like me, left Morningside early. Mm -hmm. and wanted to get up to the country. And so they got to Duluth was kind of country living for us. I can remember right. going to Parsons store in Duluth oh, yeah. when I was 14 years old. I ain't gonna right. say how long ago that was, but that's a long, <laughs> long, long, about, long, about long, long years, time. About 20 years, and And Duluth was a little strip like Jasper. Right. They had the little downtown area and little stores, oh, yeah. and that's what Duluth amounted to. Sure, sure. And now it's like, Blowing well, up. Yeah, and I remember, crazy. I remember, and my, my grandparents lived in Sandy Springs for a little while. Roswell Road, Sandy mm -hmm, Springs. Mm -hmm. Back then, that Nothing. wasn't part of Atlanta. No. I mean, no. you had 285 going through there, and you had yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But it wasn't part of Atlanta. No. Now it's part of Atlanta. Like, yeah. it's, it's yes. been swallowed yes. up yes. as incorporated Atlanta. Yeah. Anything inside 285. But back then, it was kind of, you know, it's suburb. Yeah. It was very yeah. suburban. Absolutely. Now it's Absolutely. very urban, you know, yeah. and the suburbs have pushed out further. So Yeah, it's different. Yeah. It, it is oh, a yeah. very different. One of the shootings that happened in Atlanta was at the Lindbergh Marta Station. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to work at Broadview Plaza, which was right there at Lindbergh. And, and, sure. and it was a wonderful shopping center. I worked in a jewelry store, and it's the first time I ever saw anybody pull a gun and shoot somebody. Right. And we were being robbed for like the how manyth time, you know, and, and our owner, ma'am, you're dead. <laughs> so, wow. you know, um, and I can remember thinking then, I think I was making $1.65 an hour. And I'm thinking, this ain't where I want to spend my life making $1.65 right. an hour watching yeah. people get shot in the middle of the show. Yeah. So Don't I decided, me. yeah, I decided it yeah. was time to flee Atlanta. But, but from that, I still would go down there and shop. I didn't think you could buy groceries up here because, right. you know, we had the Blue Star and Townsend's grocery store. So about the first two months I lived up here, I would drive down to Atlanta to buy groceries. Then one day I walked in the Blue Star. Then one day I walked in Townsend's and I said, we got groceries. We got, yeah. you know? And I was like, okay, I'll never have oh, yeah. to go back down there yeah. again. And, uh, and you kind of adjust. Sometimes people will tell me, well, they don't have so-and-so. And I said, listen, anything you really need, yeah. you can find within a 30-mile radius. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and you really can. You really can, yeah. yeah. And yeah. see, I grew, so I grew up in Woodstock, basically. And so, I, you know, like to me, a lot of fans of the Speed Burger. You oh, know, my gosh. And, uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. To me, the Speed Burger is almost an exact replica of what I grew up with in Woodstock called the Burger Inn. Oh, I don't yes. know if you know I the remember. Burger Inn. Oh, yes. Been right there, done that. Yes, and, yes. And, you know, Bought five. many pieces of meat from there. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Can't, I guess Canton Highway or whatever. Yes. But anyway, and uh, and it's still there. I guess it's still open. I, I know the building is still there. Now, but yeah, I, I don't know. But anyway, we used to go there literally. But when I, the first time I walked into the Speed Burger, it was like, it was like this. You were being at the Burger Inn? Retro. Yeah, like this, like. <laughs> 
I felt like I walked right back into yeah. my childhood because yeah. the way it was laid out yeah. and the building and it, yeah. it was just just almost an exact replica. So. Um, you still have, I, I love that we're, we're, we've got new things that are moving in and popping in and some great places and ice cream shops and coffee shops and all those things, but you still have the old nostalgia yes, yes, yes. of what Jasper and Ella J, you know, have. And you and talk about were. somebody whose standards have never changed, mm -hmm. the Speed Burger. Yeah. From the day they open the doors. Right. From the day they open the doors. The Speed right. Burger is still as great today yep. ever. Yeah, still and a it's, lot of people. It's one my of those things. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go by and get a, a bag of Speedy Burgers and I'll take it to the office and say, hey, y'all, there's a bag of Speed Burgers. And they're yeah. like, really? Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I did not come in with a filet mignon. I came in with Speed Burgers. Right. And everybody's yep. jumping and they're so excited. <laughs> huh? Oh, Danny says, I, my phone's out in the car. Can you look at your phone? Danny oh, okay. Hensley sent us a text. Oh, did he? He said, yeah. okay, so, all right, so Danny just sent a text uh, to update, and we'll kind of fill everyone in if they yeah. don't know, but um, says, uh, made it to MD Anderson. Praise the Lord. Took COVID test Monday, which was yesterday, came back negative. First doctor appointment is in the morning. Please keep me in your prayers. Pray specifically let that the cancer is sensitive to the treatments and will be destroyed. Absolutely. Pray that God guides the doctors and medical team. Pray for my healing. Pray for my family. Pray for everyone with this terrible disease. Love y'all. That's straight from, from Danny Absolutely. Hensley. Absolutely. And, and I did yesterday's program and, and dedicated that to, if Danny Hensley hadn't made the decision, if Roger Futch hadn't made the decision, I would have never been sitting here. Right. And, and we know the power of prayer. And from the day Danny was diagnosed, I went to our church and I said, guys, we got to put Danny Hensley on the prayer list. We know the power of prayer. Yeah. And that's one of the other wonderful things about ETC. We can join you and your churches and your family and your friends in prayer. And we have people in California praying for Danny. We have people in Michigan praying for Danny. We have people everywhere because they might have summer homes here. They may watch us online. They have seen us and they add him to the prayer list. And that's yep. what the power of prayer does. Yep, it really is. It's prayer warriors, mm -hmm. prayer chain, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, that is one good thing, I think, that, a good thing that comes out of social media and Facebook is that mm -hmm. you do have those prayer warriors that are able to get the message out. Oh, yeah. So it's not, uh, to me, it's not all completely evil. I mean, there, yeah. there is some good that can come through those social networks, and that's one of them as well. Mm -hmm. You extend that prayer chain out further and further. Absolutely. So, I, yeah, we do continue yeah. to keep Danny, and we were going to talk about that, but yeah. uh, I definitely, you know, want to encourage folks to keep Danny in, in your prayers. And, and we are going to say... Um, Cancer is one of those. We have a true success story. 15 years ago, Hans Rupert was given a 1% chance to live. It is 15 years later. He will be with us on Thursday. He wanted to make sure that Danny got into MD Anderson because he said truly his team of doctors there and the prayers right. brought him back to his family. And that's right. what it's about. You know, it's putting that right doctor and, and a doctor whose hand is guided by the Lord. Absolutely. And that yep. has a lot to do with it. Absolutely. You know, um, yes. I'm, I have a fantastic doctor who worked on my eyes and the whole team prayed with me before they operated. Right. Wow. And I said, how good does that make yeah, you feel? How exactly. good does that make you feel? And, and he says, hey, we've got this. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And, and that to me, and, um, and we know that the power of prayer and God puts you just where he wants you to be. And it worked out that Danny got to go to MD Anderson. A lot of people yes. don't get that opportunity because right. it doesn't work out for them. But God lined it up, and he's there. Well, so. and, and one of the things about working somewhere so long as I did here is even though I'm not in here full time and, and you know, barely darken the door, you know, this place became family. It was like mm -hmm. another family to Absolutely. me. And people like Danny have always meant a lot to me. And I talked to yeah. him a couple weeks ago when I found out about everything. I, I said, you know, I love you. You know, I mean, you're like you, to me, I see you more as a family than I do as a coworker right. or a former right. boss or any right. of that, you right. know. And, and uh, there's a lot of people that I can say that about here still, and, mm -hmm. and Danny's certainly one of those. So yep. definitely keep it in pray, and pray, pray, yes. pray. Okay, look at the time. One hour. See, Roger wow. Fudge was right. We all do this Flies for two by. hours. <laughs> <laughs> it is time for us to get out of here. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for remembering all the happy memories here at ETC. Amazing memories, amazing people, amazing opportunity to come into your homes. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. We're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet only at ETC. We'll see you again soon. Hans will be with me on Thursday, so be sure and set your DVR and record our programs. See you soon, guys. Bye.